Tis I. Hey everyone, glad to see you back, glad to see you looking fresh, and today I wanted to talk about hotel television. As you can see, I'm not in my normal recording space. I am in fact in a hotel room currently for work-related purposes, and I wanted to talk about, I mean, hotel room TV, because it's on my mind. Like, what else have I been doing here? Uh, you know, I brought my computer, I can edit a little bit, but other than that, really, it's just it's me and some cable. And, you know, it's a weird topic. I brought it up with my friends before. I don't know if I've really mentioned it on this channel before. I don't really talk about TV at all on this channel, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit. Um, like, the first thing that comes to mind, I think the big one, is, like, reruns of people's favorite sitcoms. You know, people bring their laptop, watch The Office, and they watch Friends, and whatever else they want to watch. Like, the reruns of your favorite sitcoms are a great way to spend a time in a hotel where you're not there on vacation. Like, I'm not here on vacation. Like, I'm stationed. The st <laughs> station says much more important. I'm staying here because uh, my work sent me here. So, it's really not that big of a deal. I, I have my laptop, so I can watch some Netflix and stuff on that. But this TV doesn't come equipped with Netflix. So, I have actually watched both Office and Friends. I've seen both of the shows before. But just popping them on. Uh, I don't, I'm not binging them currently. But... It's good to have on in, in the background while I'm either, you know, getting ready or just trying to wind down from the day. But the big ones I want to talk about are shows that, like, don't have an ongoing plot. They don't have a big importance. Like, you can pop in an episode you can leave. They're not shows that I would necessarily watch outside of this kind of environment. They're perfect for this kind of situation. Uh, first thing I want to bring up is, like, cooking competition shows. Any competition, any cooking show really is a good time to do it. I would turn on Food Network. I watched some, like, uh, Beat Bobby Flay, I think is what it was called. Bobby Flay is a chef that I know of. I don't know much about. He's not my favorite celebrity chef. I've never tried any of his food. He's just a dude to me. But, like, that show was kind of fun. Popped on, watched a couple episodes. These chefs trying to beat out Bobby Flay, but anything like a Gordon Ramsay, most Gordon Ramsay shows that aren't like ongoing, like Kitchen Nightmares would be great, um, like Next Level Chef really wouldn't because like I said, it's like, can't wait really to pop in halfway through that season and not know what's going on. I think ridiculousness is like our generation, uh, is like, that's like a premier example of hotel television. The older generations probably wouldn't get into as much, but our generation I think is really about it. It's also on a lot. It's not as much anymore. I came here and I was kind of like excited to watch it. I don't watch Ridiculousness at home. So I kind of got here and I was like, let's, 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 let's put on some Ridiculousness. And I have seen it. And it's been on the TV since being here, which is awesome. But it's not really a thing as much. I remember the last time I stayed in a hotel, it was on 24-7. Like I could turn it on, to turn the TV on, Ridiculousness was on. I went to work, came back, it was on. <laughs> It was easy, but it hasn't been as much. It's been other stuff. I guess MTV is actually diversifying their portfolio a little bit. But the the best network for this type of programming is the History Channel. I'm talking Pawn Stars. I'm talking American Pickers. Uh, I used to watch these shows, like, regularly. Like, every week I'd tune in and watch them. There were also shows called Counting Cars and American Restoration. They're in that same vein of programming. <laughs> Uh, Counting Cars and American Restoration were like spinoffs of Pawn Stars. They're all set in like Las Vegas. They're all friends of Rick and the Pawn Stars. I know like Rick and the American Pickers have crossed paths before, but they are two different situations where Counting Cars and Restoration really fed off of the Pawn Star thing. I don't know if those two are still on. I'm pretty sure Pickers is, because it's the one has been on the most since I've been here. Pawn Stars, not as much, but Pickers has been on quite a bit. And that's, like, pretty much it, except for The King. In my opinion, The King of Hotel Television, which is Impractical Jokers. I mean, how can I not mention Impractical Jokers? I, I love this show. That's like the only show, really, I would watch outside of this situation. I mean, I love Pickers and Ponsters as well, but they're not shows that I would, like, sit down and, like, watch a lot. The Impractical Jokers is what I've seen their live show. 
I, I watched every episode. Like I, when it came out on HBO Max, back when it was called that, I binged the entire show. Loved it. Absolutely had a blast watching it. So it's just easy, easy, easy to watch. I remember the first time seeing the show, it was recommended to me from one of my friends in school. And I was like, all right, I'll check it out. I was at home for, I think, winter break. And I was like bored. This was like right before the holidays. So it's like leading up to it. There was nothing going on. And me and my dad were just watching TV. And I was like, oh, let's put this on. I heard it's funny. And it was the episode where they were like giving a presentation, which happens a lot in this show. And they mentioned, it was something about like Florida resorts. And they make a joke. It was Joe makes a joke about they caught the gator that ate the DeLuca boy. And I laughed so hard. I... I don't know if the show's ever made me laugh quite that hard again, but from then on, I was hooked. And I could just watch the show endlessly. I could binge it. Uh, like I said, when it came to HBO Max, I binged the entire thing. Of course, that was right at the heat of it. Now, I don't know what else going on. So me, I watched it a lot. Me and my sister watched it a lot. Around that time, it was a blast. Shark Tank is a really good one. I actually do watch Shark Tank in my own time. I, I did like the show. I remember one time back in school, we had a snow day. And I remember going to the dining hall and talking to my roommate and just saying like, man, I wish Shark Tank was streamable. And he, my other roommate <laughs> was on the other side of the table, looked at me, he's like, it is. I think it's on Hulu. And I just looked at it, it was there. And let me tell you what, when I say we watched a lot of Shark Tank, we watched nothing but Shark Tank the rest of the day. Went back to our dorm and we watched so much shark tank that day and ever since then it's become kind of like one of my favorite shows it, it's a show that me and my roommates currently actually watch sometimes when we're eating dinner but it's not like a big fixture in my life but it is it's good programming for this kind of circumstances but nothing will be and practical jokers i absolutely adore the guys uh, Q, Murr, Joe, Sal, you know, Joe is no longer with us, maybe rest in peace, not actually dead, but I'm sure dead to some of the <laughs> that's mean, um, I hope, you know, he, he's, he's still, he's still full on myself, I don't know why I'm talking like he's gone, he is gone from the show, but he's not like gone in the, the spiritual <laughs> sense, he's still on this plane of existence, He's just not on the show anymore. Uh, but I hope, I hope he's doing well. I, I think he is. I follow him on, I follow him all on social media. So I love the guys. And it's it's been a blast watching them over the years. And it, hotel television, they're the kings of it. It's the best time to watch it. Weirdly enough, though, I mean, I'm, I'm looking behind the TV right now. I'm watching Jurassic World because even though it's like basic cable, it comes with HBO. So that's kind of thick. I've watched a couple movies that I've never seen before. Would you believe it? I never seen 2012. I just never the Roland Emmerich 2012. I just hadn't seen it until until here. I mean, movies are is a good time. My dad did that a lot when he used to travel for work. He would go and he wouldn't ever tell me what movies he saw because he would never catch it at the beginning and see the title. He would just put on a movie and watch it. I mean, that's a pretty dad thing to do. Just put on a movie partway through and then finish it and be like, that was pretty good. I'm like, dad, what was it? I don't know. He wouldn't know. You know, bless him. He was great at that kind of thing. And then eventually, like, years down the line, I'd show him a movie, and he'd be like, oh, I've seen that already. I'm like, where? And he wouldn't know that either. But that's, again, a very dad thing to do. But I've been watching some movies. You know you know me. Uh, I sound like I've been here all the time. <laughs> um, I've also been watching, like, when I get back, Billy and Mandy's on, which is awesome. I love that cartoon. So, it's, I think that's pretty much everything I've seen since being here. Or, or the things I've said. But, it, it's been, you know, not the most fun in the world <laughs> being here. But, it's not been too bad. Hotel television is pretty simple, pretty samey. But, it's enjoyable well well enough. It, it's good at what it does. But, that'll about do it for me today. Um, what is your favorite hotel television show you know basically a show that doesn't require any previous knowledge you can kind of jump in jump out wherever you can binge it it's good enough to binge we don't need to that kind of thing you know what i mean so game shows that's another good one i didn't mention but anyways that'll about do for me today thank you so very much for watching and as always like this if you like this subscribe we have already and i will see you 
at some point. <laughs>